in the 80s, these uh, alternative comedians were attacking a conservative society which had power. Now, um, those people have power. The, the, those comedians are the elite. And um, and they're basically just the foot so the the lieutenants to uphold the system. Yeah, I call them regime comedians. Graham Minahan also calls them that. I think I came up with it. Maybe he did. But yeah, in the 80s, that's interesting because in this country, there was alternative comedy, which was a little bit smug and insufferable. But at least you could say Thatcher was in for an awful long time. They were anti-Thatcher. So there was an anti-establishment element to it. In hindsight, you could look at it and say, well, they replaced the working men's comics. Was it actually middle class people replacing a working class tradition? Maybe they weren't so anti-establishment. Maybe in a way they were already elitist in a sense, but they were at least attacking Thatcher, which you could say was punching up if you want to use those stupid phrases. Whereas, yeah, once that, then there was a sort of free time in the 90s where it was just kind of, you had like laddish humor, Frank Skinner and stuff, and it was just about, you could be outrageous and say anything. That was probably the, a better, you know, good time for comedy. And now, like you say, now it's, it's, they are the establishment and the regime, but they still have to pretend not to be. Like Stuart Lee always has to pretend still that he's some sort of rebel, which is completely ludicrous, while praising Carol Vorderman because she attacks the Tories or something. And it's and jolly and mourn. It's the most absurd idea. And the, and the idea is this, this nonsense worldview they have of an England of the 50s, which no longer exists, yeah. where the, the, the right wing are still very much in charge and, and, and have power, which is obviously not true. Um, it's it's they who have power, and so to the extent that co that comedy is the, the 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 Shakespearean fall speaking truth to power, um, that's that's exactly the opposite of what they're doing. They're they're not that. The Shakespearean fall becomes these breakaway has to must be uh, these breakaway uh, subcultures which are which are not represented in the, what we, to the extent that we still have it i mean my, my kids hardly watch television at all but you know it's, it's boomers that watch tv for christ's sake but the the comedians that go on the kind of things like eight out of ten cats does countdown and and we know which comedian was at arc so even he has uh, had enough of a, of, a, of a lot of this which i which i thought was interesting oh jimmy um, Khan. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, am I? But, um, oh, but yeah, yeah. I don't, oh, I don't know if he's open about being. I there. think he I was openly how, there. Was he openly there? Okay, so Jimmy Carr, and even he, he, I spoke, chatted to him, pleasant guy, I thought, and and he was saying to me that it's, it was the Israel thing that pushed him over the edge. The idea that you've got people in his industry defending terrorists and whatever, and he just thought sod it. Um, uh, yeah. So was, he's an ex fundamentalist Christian. Right. I noticed right, him right. creeping across a bit because he did he did a podcast with Jordan Peterson a while ago. And I remember thinking he couldn't have even done that in the comedy industry two years prior. But then by the time he did it, it's like, OK, you can just about go there. Then arcs another step. We've seen Ricky Gervais just recently, just this week, doing a, an anti-immigration joke, which is unthinkable any other time. So there is something happening a little bit where, you know, there's these few comedians who are, of course, Dave Chappelle has just come out again with another anti-trans joke and so on in his new special. So there is a, or they, they call it anti-trans. There is a oh, they, they, they won't They won't book Roy Chubby Brown, though. Roy Chubby Brown is having problems. Yeah, all his, all his venues get cancelled by the council and things like that. He sells them out and then they, they just get shut down. And you end, you end up defending Roy Chubby Brown on TV, which is such a weird thing to to end up doing. Yeah, that's but he did. He, he never. He 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 stuck to his guns. He, he never, he just carried on doing the comedy of the kind of the 70s, really. Yeah, and then and, and when uh, in the eighties or nineties it was considered really low brow stuff, but you look at it now, or well, watch it now, and um, um, stuff from his you know, that I find on YouTube or whatever, and it's highly rebellious. You're like, wow, this is speaking <laughs> truth. Wow, you know, this is actually the new alternative comedy. Are you ready for the future of the West? <laughs>